Hey, how are you doing, econ students? So today our video is going to look at um, government intervention into markets. Okay, so this is the first video that I'm going to do on this. Um, and we're going to have a look at price controls today. Now, price controls are or can be defined as government intervention to prevent the market reaching equilibrium. And we're going to look at two forms of price controls today. A price ceiling, which is a maximum price on a good set below equilibrium to protect the consumer. And we're going to look at price floor, which is a minimum price on a good set above equilibrium, which protects producers. Okay, so hopefully after this video, you'll be able to understand the diagram and the effects of this diagram on a number of stakeholders. So hopefully it's useful for your um, exams and IB, AP, a level, etc. So first of all, let's have a look at price ceilings. Now, as I said before, this is to protect the consumer, and uh, price ceilings have, are, have been introduced on a whole range of products before, like uh, gasoline um, and apartments, which is what we'll be having a look at today. So, in this diagram, I've drawn uh, a simple supply and demand graph uh, with your equilibrium price and your equilibrium uh, quantity okay so in this case the government or there's pressure on the government um, because the price is too high for them to lower the price okay now this happens has happened many times in the case of apartments it happened in new york it's happened in london it's happened in tokyo and most major cities and that's where the house prices rise too high for an ordinary person to afford an apartment. Okay, so there's pressure on the government to introduce a price ceiling. So the, the government has introduced a price ceiling, as they did in New York. So we can draw that in the diagram as PC across here. Um, and you'll notice, the most important thing to notice about this is that quantity demanded this point is much greater than the quantity supplied. So you remember equilibrium is where uh, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So when this happens, quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied, there is a shortage. Okay, now we'll talk about how that affects the different stakeholders in just one second. Okay. Um, the other thing I want you to know is that many students get these two things the wrong way round and they end up getting zero points in their final exam. The way I used to remember it at college is that this sort of shape kind of looks like a house. Okay, like this. And where would the ceiling be on the house? Well, the ceiling would be right here. And of course, you can't throw anything through the ceiling, so the price cannot go above that point, okay? Uh, and the opposite is true in the uh, price floor, which we'll talk about later. So first of all, uh, very important in, um, for all the exam boards to think about the stakeholders. How do uh, price ceilings and price floors affect each uh, group? So first of all, let's have a think about consumers. So consumers, of course, the price is lower than equilibrium. So they're going to be happy, right? Um, and we can see that in the diagram. The consumer surplus has also increased. So remember, consumer surplus um, at original equilibrium is this triangle here. But with the price ceiling introduced, the triangle is much larger. Okay? So that means, in theory, consumers should be better off and happier with the lower prices. However, that's not the full story. As we know, as I just said, um, putting a price ceiling could lead to shortages. Now this happens because, if you think about this, the diagram, the quantity, even though the quantity demanded is here, the quantity supplied is here, that means there's much less producers willing to rent or uh, build new apartments. Okay, so it's going to lead to a, a shortage. And also, if you put a price ceiling on things, then 
the producers are not going to produce apartments of a higher quality beyond what the apartment is worth. So then you start getting apartments looking all roughly the same. Now for me, I used to live in the Czech Republic in a communist apartment and there was hundreds of blocks that looked exactly the same. That's because there was very tight controls on uh, buildings during the uh, communist periods. Controls on price, controls on buildings, and everything ended up looking the same with very poor quality. Okay, so next we'll think about the workers in this situation. Um, so the workers, again, as I said, there'll be less uh, quantity supplied. So there'll be perhaps lower output. So that means there'll be less um, buildings being built and less apartments being rented out. So that means there'll be less need for maintenance work and building work and uh, upgrading apartments, etc. Okay. So next we'll look at producers. So the producers obviously are not gonna be happy with price ceilings uh, because they'll now have to sell and rent uh, their apartments at a much lower price. Now you can see this online, just, just have a look online, search Donald Trump uh, price ceilings and you'll find a whole list of articles. He was very, very open about uh, his dislike for his tenants who were on uh, price ceilings in the 1960s, 1950s. Okay, so, uh, and then thinking about the diagram again, with that massive increase in consumer surplus, you have the producer surplus decrease from this triangle to this very small triangle here. Uh, yeah. Um, and the last point, the last group to have a, a think about is the government. Now price ceilings are a very, and price controls overall are a very, very popular uh, policy. Um, most consumers support it. I mean, who wouldn't support lower prices? So say for example, in Venezuela, uh, Chavez, when he came into government, uh, promised very tight uh, price controls on a whole range of, of goods. That increased his popularity. Um, and in the UK right now, the Labour Party, many people in the Labour Party support rent controls in London. Again, increasing their popularity. Okay, so, and there's also another issue of black markets. Um, black markets is an interesting one as well, because see, for Japan, it's really, to get around the idea of price ceilings, they had an idea called key money. And that's literally what, what, it, what, it, uh, what it says, key money. You're buying the key to the apartment. So the apartment landlords knew that they could only charge the same amount every month. So, so they would charge this insane price just to buy the key for the apartment. And this would often uh, be four months rent at the beginning. Therefore, artificially, you know, increasing their revenue. Um, so what are some of the alternatives to this? Now I would say a good alternative to just putting a price ceiling on it is to increase the supply of housing. Therefore, uh, like this, so therefore reducing the price of rented or bought accommodation. Okay. However, there's a number of problems about this. We'll talk about that later in our uh, video about subsidies. But this would, this would uh, increase consumer surplus and decrease prices and increase the amount of uh, houses on the market. So that may be a possible alternative. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of price ceilings. Get to know some of these arguments and you'll be okay for your upcoming exam. Now the next one is price floors, which is kind of the opposite. Again, uh, I've used the little house analogy. So again, if you put a small house above equilibrium, there you have, where would you put the floor? Uh, right here. So again, remember, nothing can go below the floor. It's impossible to go back down below equilibrium. 
So what are the effects of this on the different groups? Um, so we'll have a think about consumers, first of all. So consumers, if you put a price floor, the price has increased from PE to PFL, okay? And then if we think again about the consumer surplus, the consumer surplus um, in the free market was ABC, this triangle here, and it's now shrunk to just A. Okay, so that means the consumers will be worse off in this case, and of course they will be, the prices are, are higher. Um, the workers, if you're a, say if this is an exa the example here is the market for milk, so it's farm workers. The farm workers will gain because there's going to be a massive increase in output and therefore an increase in demand for farm workers. Now we'll think about producers. So the producers uh, are now selling at a higher price, B BFL, um, so therefore their uh, the producer surplus has increased from D E to to B C D E F. So their consumer surplus is much larger. Um, however, however, the problem with this is again much like the price uh, ceilings, is it creates a huge surplus. Now a surplus is when the quantity supplied here is much greater than the quantity demanded here. Okay, this is a problem because what do you do with that surplus? Now although the um, producer surplus has increased and the producers are happy, what are they going to do with all that extra milk or any other pro agricultural product that they have left over. Now this has happened so often, there's been butter mountains, grain mountains, rice mountains um, across Europe due to these kind of schemes. Uh, what do you do with it? And in America, with the market for milk, there was so much surplus milk that they had to um, dispose of it in some way, like pour it into the river or dump it somewhere. Uh, but a way, so now moving on to the, the government. Uh, so the government may have to buy this surplus because they're the ones who've caused it in the first place, right? So they've got to try and fix it. Now, what can they do to fix it? Well, first thing they could do is to buy up the surplus. And then what would they do with the surplus? They can get, a very common policy is to give out free school milk. Um, so I don't know if you've seen it, many, in many countries they advertise free school milk as, oh, we're helping the kids be healthy and grow stronger. The real story behind all of those things is normally there's a massive surplus and they've got to get rid of it in some way. Uh, so they give it out free school milk. This can be very expensive for the government uh, to buy up all that milk. Because again, they're probably buying it at PFL price. They can also fund advertising programs like the Got Milk campaign in the US with uh, people like George Clooney and all these other famous actors advertising milk. It wasn't to um, it wasn't to encourage healthy living. It was merely to get rid of the surplus. Uh, also, there's another issue here of dumping. So if uh, you set the price for this price and you have a huge surplus. Uh, what do you do with it? You can sell that surplus on the international market or give it away as food aid. So in America, which had a massive surplus of rice, they can just dump it on uh, developing countries. And that could damage their economies. Okay, so what could be the alternative to this? Huh. The alternative to this could be to just merely try to increase the demand for that product. Um, and that could be done, again, through uh, national advertising campaigns um, and a lot of other different methods. Um, okay, so that's kind of it. So that's price floors and price ceilings. Just remember the stakeholders 
how does it affect each of these groups? Um, and then you can write a really good essay on price controls. Normally the IB uh, will choose either one or the other, or sometimes it will just give you a basic question on price controls. So you've got to know these kind of arguments, and in particular, you've got to know how the diagram works. And please, 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 always revert to the labels in the diagram. Okay, thanks very much. Next time, taxes and subsidies. Thank you all.